Okay, so another step for refurbishing this kiln is the Rootland Dry Mix 211. It's refractory mortar uh, that's able to withstand the heat by this kiln. Let's put about two, actually probably like three cups of dry and I put about maybe a cup of water, clean water, and it's just slowly painting this, what I call wash on. Many of you know this coating, finishing coat, by a different name, by a certain manufacturer, Scott. And um, they're very expensive and it's hard to find, especially at ceramic in the kiln uh, shops. With this, you can go online on Amazon and buy a whole, how much is this? Yes, yeah, 10 pounds of the dry mix which makes I think a gallon. And uh, it's like 23 bucks on sale, $28 when it's not on sale. And uh, I just want to do a thin coat. As you can tell, this lid has seen better days. I got some chips, I'm just gently applying. And it is very relatively easy to thin out, just like so. brush it lightly and a wet brush will allow the mortar to kind of fill up those gaps as well as create a, a level surface and all you need to do to prep the surface of the kiln lid is just to take a heavy grit sanding block and sand after you sand, you can take a vacuum to it and suck up the whatever you sand it off. That way, all the junk and dust is off of the lid. And you created a rough surface that's ready to be supplied. Plus, you want to get rid of that other old finishing as much as, as possible in regards to where it's chipping off. Just like so. And it really doesn't need much. Especially if it has a moderate, the lid has moderate wear. Okay, here we have a finished, air cured uh, finish for the lid. It looks really good. I did lay it on pretty thick and it took some time to dry. This is day number four. As you can tell, there's some different coloration. It's just where the uh, water had seeped in or, or soaked in a little bit differently and consistently. So now what we're going to do is just take a sanding block. You can get one, of course, at uh, even a Dollar Tree if you want it. Uh, practically anywhere you can find these. It usually comes in two grits. I take the heavier grit first and I work from the outside or rather the inside of the lid doing small small circles so i don't dig into any one place too hard feather it out and depending on how thick you put this in um will dictate how many run-throughs the sanding will be so as you can see we have some lid damage not only to what I call the cap refractory, uh, but you also have, looks like maybe even shards that had shot up and took out small chunks of the brick out. We also have some clay, um, some clay shards that had um, protruded up in a blast and it has some, uh, some shards and chips still in place. So what we're gonna do is lightly sand these um, uh, places out to receive our refractory cement but we're also going to sand down um, the shards that have embedded themselves. I'm going to take just a regular plastic spatula and just see how much in regards to depth um, the shards are in. Hopefully I could just take them out a little bit without doing damage to uh, the face of the brick. And then we'll con continue to sand down the rest of the inside lid. My spatula that's plastic just grated across at a 45 degree angle see what will come off and see what's stubborn okie dokie so we're going to do the same 
as we did the lid. The trick is not to spill your cement as you are painting on a vertical surface. I'll work from the edges, edges down or edges to the middle, and you're going to have some drips, but that's okay because we're going to go ahead and feather this out a little bit. So uh, I went ahead and applied a good generous coats, uh, two generous coats on the top of the lid, and I went ahead and I applied a whole ring of mortar on the outside uh, ring here. So uh, one of the reasons why I chose to apply it to our uh, refractory brick here, uh, which is not normally not done, um, is because I was losing some heat because the uh, refractory brick was more or less potted or pitted. Um, so there's a lot of refractory brick that was missing and I was losing some heat and also it was very fragile. So I want to go ahead, I wanted to go ahead and uh, secure that brick in place. And also make sure that I didn't have any more cracks developing because I had some here. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to sand this down the most. Um, and even I want to see some of the refractory brick as I sand so it's nice and flush. Now what's really good for uh, this type of work, especially when you're trying to do the even work, since it's very much essential here, is to not only uh, sand down with a sanding block, but have uh, a sanding block or sandpaper on a block that has a larger surface area and a longer one as well. So you can go ahead and can ride that sandpaper out in a more evenly distributed surface area. Uh, just regular wood, went ahead and I beveled the wood. So it's like that. And that way you're not going to dig into the side of the surface that you're um, um, sanding but also keeps the sandpaper from wanting to break underneath that tension. So a small bevel. I'm using regular sanding belt paper. And this is 80 grit. So this is really gonna help you in your perfect process of sanding out your refractory cement. Now, take a note that I am working the area, the surface. You don't want to stay um, at a certain section for too long because that means that's going to be deepening the surface that you're removing. Meaning, I guess a better way to say it is you're sanding more out of section than all the rest, which is not only going to be uneven and hard to determine how much you've taken off compared to the other surface areas, but also won't cause any dips for your board to ride on and cause more uh, damage to your surface area. Okay, now we have our finished lid. And as you can tell, this is all sanded down. It beveled out really nicely. Even the crack that we patched is nice. Go into the inside here. Remember, we sanded all that out. There's absolutely no cracks or uh, chips, as you can tell. Nice. We went ahead and uh, sanded it down all the way to the original refractory brick. This way, you can get a tight lid, but also fix all that pitting Make sure that you secure that refractory brick that was cracking. And you can maintain or what keep that heat in so you don't lose any of that heat. So thank you so much for taking this journey with me in this project of refurbishing a kiln lid inside and out. Now this is going to be video uno, number one, of many videos about kiln restoration or kiln refurbishing. I brought this kiln not too long ago and it was in complete, uh, well, I mean, it was good. It was relatively a good kiln, but it needs some, what, loving, tender care. So I thought I would bring you into the journey in multiple steps so you can catch each stage of refurbishing a kiln or just general maintenance of your kiln so you can revisit those videos uh out of the timeline if you wish, or you can go ahead and watch the whole timeline and succinct, and I'm going to be uploading the new one, and I'm going to 
well, the next one. And I'm going to be uploading uh, two cards here so you can uh, look at the past restoration video or refurbishing video and then the next one so you don't miss anything. You'll also be able to subscribe up here so you don't miss a video. So thanks so much for taking this journey and I hope it helped to actually see a human being doing the whole process. A lot of this is never taught, especially in studio classes. So now you know.